Hello, I'm Professor Stephen Abbott. Welcome to this updated tutorial using the HSPIP 5.4th edition. We saw that polylactic acid could have its HSP measured and its 18.7, 7.7, And if we look at this list of solvents, we find that pyridine is a great solvent, but of course it's too smelly. Dioxalane is a good solvent, but it's too volatile. And methylene dichloride is a good solvent, but it's chlorinated, so we can't use it. So how do we find good solvents or good solvent blends using rational techniques? Well, we click the optimizer button and we find the solvent optimizer and the target 18.7.7.7.0 has automatically been set. So we want to find solvents which are close in HSP distance to that target. And the optimizer solvent set here is a convenient list of solvents. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, but they're convenient. We have lots of data. We have the DD, DPDH, of course. We have molar volume. We have the relative evaporation rate. We have the Antoine coefficients. And we have things like boiling point and flash point. Very useful data for general optimization. We know that a short distance is good, so let's sort by distance. And we find that dimethyl isosorbide, a green solvent, is very close. So that would be a good start, except its relative evaporation rate is very low, so maybe it's not volatile enough for us. Cyclohexanone is not bad, it's quite a good balance, and it's not very toxic. Butyl benzoate is quite green, but again not very volatile. And there's doxalane with a very high relative evaporation rate and a very low flash point of minus six, so we probably can't use that. So none of these solvents on their own is ideal for us. So let's find a solvent blend. Let's find the two best solvents out of this list when combined in any proportion to give us a good match. And we find that a 6139 blend of benzyl benzoate and dimethylacetamide has a calculated value of 8.8, 7.6, 7.2. So it's very close. It's got a distance of 0.2. Now, of course, you're not going to use dimethylacetamide, but this is showing the principle. Let me unselect those. Let me sort again. And let's say I'm really keen to use benzyl alcohol. That's a really nice solvent for various reasons. So which one solvent combined in any proportion with benzyl alcohol would be a good match for PLA? I click the one button and I find that a 25-75 blend with cyclohexanone is a very good match with just a distance of 1.6. So if I really want to use benzyl alcohol, then that's not a bad combination. But suppose I want to use 46% benzyl alcohol for some good reason. I click the one button again that says, if you really want to use 46%, then in this case, cyclohexanone is still the best co-solvent and the distance is a bit further. So you can start to find good solvent blends via this technique. Resorting by solvent and selecting a few solvents at random. I'm just doing this purely at random. What combination of these five solvents would be best? I hit the O button and it tells me that a 63298 blend of benzyl benzoate, acetone and n amyl alcohol is quite a good match at a distance of 1.4. So I can do all sorts of optimizations. But many of these solvents aren't green. Let's find a selection of green solvents. We have a bunch of them, but I will find the selection chosen by the York GCCE. A very select list of green solvents. I still have the target, so I sort by distance. I find that anisole is quite good. It's a surprisingly green solvent, and sirene isn't so bad. If I ask for the best blend, then I find that a 5644 blend of anisole and sirene is quite a good match. If I really wanted to use uh, ethyl acetate, paracymine and butyl acetate and dimethyl carbonate, then I can optimize that blend um, and so forth. So the solvent optimizer allows you to do all sorts of smart optimization of solvents and solvent blends to achieve your targets, balancing evaporation rates, toxicity, safety, and cost. Talking of evaporation, let's go back to our 
blend of two solvents and see what happens when it evaporates. We see that the anisole starts off at a higher proportion, 56%, and it decreases relatively because it has a higher RER and the siren increases. And here is the total decreasing over time. This might not be the best way to do things. We start off with a really good solvent blend where the RA, the distance between the blend and the polymer is very low, which is great. But over time, because the anisole has disappeared, we end up with a larger RA, the 4.7 of the siren. So it would probably be better, this is an exercise for you to do later, to start off with a blend which has a higher initial distance but ends up with anisole being the remaining solvent because it's closer. So you can do all sorts of clever trade-offs of evaporation rate, solvent blends and compatibility so that the polymer stays in as long as possible to give you the most relaxed and smooth coating.